Welcome back subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Getting that kit look without the kit. Shopping my stash and seeing how I can recreate one of my faves. Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy. So, I decided we need to figure out how to make this card without actually having the Hive 5 kit. Because I know not everyone could get it and I know it's sold out and I'm all about using what I have on hand to make something that I see that I like that I don't have the product to. So shop your stash, right? So there is a B in the berry, berry special stamp set. There's also a B and there's actually the B that looks like the stamp from High Five in one of their other stamp sets. It's one of their like Bugs and Friends, I think. I don't have that one. but. If you go back and search Tammy Stark, I think, she did three cards that have that B theme without the B set. So if you love the B look that you've been seeing, but you don't have the Hive 5 kit, go and look at that. And she does a Hive with a die cut and just some ink blending. And then using that one B from that, I think it's bugs and friends or something like that. I will list it in the description box below if I can find it. But this bee is from the Berry Special stamp set. So I have a Lawn Fawn bee. And then for my hive. So I have this set that I bought and I don't know why, but you know, I like the shapes, but this could be a hive possibly. The ice cream cone or the ice cream not cone the ice cream or the ice cream you scream the lollipop portion this could be maybe a hive but this has the the drip so if you've been looking for a drip that is still available you could definitely use the drip to get that dripping honey from the ice cream you scream set since the drip from tim holtz is discontinued that i did not know don't worry, I'm still going to use it because I have it. I'm, I'm not sad about it. The other one that I have that is still available is the Momenta, their B one. And so I will be using this hive from this one. I will just color it like normal. This one has a bigger honey dipper and some, it has, I've used this honeycomb piece in one of my other cards. That would work. And then for my actual card, so I need to make a frame. Waffle Flower has the nesting hexagon dies, but they also have in the frames. I don't have the frames. I'm just gonna make a frame using two of these and we'll go from there. So I have three selected. This is the actual die cut from the Hive 5 set. So it fits this one fairly good, but because my Hive is bigger, I'm going to go ahead and use the bigger, the two bigger ones for my actual frame. So I'm gonna actually cut this smaller one. So the small one I'm not using, this smaller one from the frame that I'm going to make to make the frame. I will tape it together and then cut it multiple times to get that dimension again. But I will cut the smallest one out from some Avery remo removable adhesive label sheet to mask off my center. So I'm starting with a bigger piece just because I wanna make sure I have enough real estate so I can use my hexagon. So I have the Tim Holtz honeycomb one, or there is the Tim Holtz mover. I think it's the movers one, right? Hexagons. I know I have one more here. And then I also have this hexagon one from All and Create. This one I think I got on clearance at either Brutus Monroe or scrapbook.com so this one's got a lot of hexagons on so if there's hexagon stamps out there you just have to look for them there's one more that I have I pulled out here sorry there's also the hexagon 
piece from the Tim Holtz Mixed Media One Set, which would also have that hexagonal shape if you are looking for like cut apart hexagon pieces or the little hexagon pop outs. I also pulled this one out because this one could be converted to a hive shape fairly easily. Let's see if I have that. What size is that one? So it's it's similar in size to this one, but just cutting off that tip or rounding it and then cutting it off straight on the bottom and then figuring out if just a, like a little partial oval there, like an oval and then if you have a little mini oval and then you could cut just a little bit off there would work this one would work for your hive as well and then just do some creative ink blending so I will show you how I do it on the one I'm the one I'm gonna do is actually gonna be markered but I can show you how to ink blend on one like this or I think Tammy in her cards uses an oval and then just taking a sheet of paper and ink and then move it down and ink just like you would clouds or ocean waves those types of things so i am going to get started here and i will speed this up for you super speed must proceed just kidding i'm not gonna i'm just gonna voice over this one instead of explaining it live because words are hard <laughs> no and you probably don't want to sit here for three hours while i figure these out so I decided to go in with that first large stencil and then I did pixie spray the back of it so it did stick down very well. It, it is a finer stencil so that's why I did do the pixie spray. The key with this one was not getting too close to that cutoff of the pattern. That way I didn't have like a funny line I guess in my stenciling. And then just repositioning it to kind of add in some of those darker spots. And then going in again with another darker shade. And I could have gone in with a smaller blending brush and been a little bit more accurate here. Like if I wanted to get the little, just do the five or just do a couple here and there sort of thing. And yes, I didn't wait long enough with my Avery removable. I love it, but as soon as you get it wet, probably with all masking papers, you get it wet. It wants to, yeah. If I'd have let it dry, it would have peeled off perfectly. I just used my adhesive eraser to get the rest of the adhesive off. And then I'm going to cut that one out. And then I decided, you know, I have this other one. Let's try it out. So I took that smaller shape shifter stencil. I think that's what it's called. And went in and did my other favorite color combination from my card series, which was that Salvage Bettina Peacock Feathers and the Uncharted Mariner in the Distress Oxides. Mm, I love that combination. The yellow, if you didn't catch it, was Mustard Seed, Wild Honey, and Rusty Hinge. And so this one, I did my full base with that salvage patina first. I probably could have saved myself a little bit of time and on my shift if I'd have gone in with the second color up of peacock feathers instead of going back over and doing it on top of the salvage patina. It probably would have saved me a little bit of time. The other tip with this one is I was trying to like turn it the other way to get a different variation. And if I'd actually just turned it at an angle and lined it up, it would have lined up at that angle. I was trying to go quick because, you know, <sighs> time is of the essence. So if we just ignore the little blooper because I reused my mask. They both looked pretty good. There is the original and there is, so not too bad. I mean, this one was easier to get the variations on than this one was, but I could have used a smaller blender brush and been a little bit more picky. But all in all, both of them look honeycomby. Back to super speed. Just kidding. Yes and no. Back to voiceover mode. So I didn't cut this one perfectly. 
square, I guess you could say. And so because I had the white cutouts for making my extra frames, I just decided to put one of those that it was going to be even in the middle or, you know, I straightened it out because my frame is going to cover just a little bit that I was off. It's not going to matter. So, you know, you got to roll with the punches. So I did shop my stash. I used the jelly jar from Very Special. And then because I did not have the coordinating die set for Very Special, I ended up pulling out Butterfly Kisses for my bee trails. There's multiple sets from Lawn Fawn that have bee trails. This was just the first one I knew that I had the coordinating die for. And then I just hand wrote my honey letters. I do not like my handwriting, so don't look too close at them. But yeah, I just started with the N in the middle and did my other letters from the, you know, pick your middle letter and then go from there. I did try to do the poo honey pot letters, but you know, I didn't do my N upside down or backwards or however it is on the poo honey pot. I realized it after I was done. It's all good. So I did use that one, I don't know, it's like a, a ward or a, it's just one of the shapes. So to alter that shape, I'm just using my, I think it's a four inch or three and a half inch circle just to get that rounded bottom that I need. And then for my door, I'm using Lawn Fawn's spoon. So I decided the little spoon from the newest teacup. I think it's the teacup one. I think the big spoon is from the the latte cup or the coffee cup. So that other spoon from the teacup is the perfect size for this one. And it gives that shape that I was going for. And I decided just to make life easier for myself and just ink blend these. Honestly, my markers were in the other room and I didn't want to go and get them. So. I just did some ink blending on these. And ink blending is super fast with these. Granted, alcohol markers probably would have been fairly quick too. For the most part, because I'd have just used the big end and color blended in a similar fashion. And then knowing that I want to make that door darker just so it's got some color variation. And I do end up coming back in when I'm putting them together to add some more color variation to it because I just didn't think it was dark enough. It kind of blended in with the rest once I added my rounded hive lines. I just took a piece of scrap paper while I was cutting off the top portion of or the bottom portion of this one and I just cut it with that cir the same circle. So I just you know, use that as my mask or my stencil in this case to get those rounded lines. So I have my pots all done, my bees are cut out, my honey trails are cut out, and I have made my hives. So my one hive is a little bit bigger than kind of fits in that little honeycomb shape. So I'm not going to put the whole hive in there. I'll just offset it just a tiny little bit. And do you see how it kind of blends in there? So I'm just, I tried going with tea dye ink and I didn't think that one was dark enough. So I think I ended up coming in with either vintage photo or gathered twig just to add a little bit more of that dark variation there. And then I'm just going to blend that in a little bit with my my saturated brush. It already had whatever the yellow shade that was on it. It probably had some rusty hinge on it. Yet. And so I'm just going to recreate my cards, but kind of give them a little different layout because my bee is facing the other direction. I will just flip my design over a little bit here. So I will put the honey pot on the left side and the bee on the right side and the honey trail or the bee trail on the right side. And then we will just add that on there. And I thought about adding the honey, the bee trail to the other side of the honey to balance it out like I had the honey dipper, but it really didn't need it, so I did not add it. 
And for this one to add this one or make this one back together or piece it back together, I just took that double sided score tape adhesive and put it where I knew I was going to need it for my pieces. And then I will just lay these back in. It's like putting together a puzzle. And everything was sticking to me. I have that problem a lot. I don't know why. <sighs> I suppose I get adhesive on my hands and then everything wants to stick. I don't know. Nothing wants to stick where I want it to stick when I want it to stick. But when I don't want it to stick, it sticks. Story of my life. So once my hive is complete, and I knew I was cutting off that top portion, so I wasn't too overly concerned with my added adhesive there. But then because I decided to move it in just a little bit, I did end up cutting that off. And so I'm just going to add it to my frame and then cut off whatever's hanging out. And then I'll peel off the back of that double-sided adhesive, add some liquid adhesive to the back of this one. You could also use like tape runner or dot type adhesive if you so choose. And then I'm going to pop up half of my bee, and then the other half of the bee is going to sit on that popped up frame. You could have also made this one a shaker, or I could have made it a shaker. I probably could have this time, but I was trying to make it as close to my other one as possible. Granted, I did change up my color scheme on this one since I ended up doing the teal slash aqua on the other one. So adding in the trail here and then just snipping off what was going to hang over. And then I needed to add some sentiments. So I shot my stash some more. I do have a bee set from Honey Bee Stamps that has all of the things in as well. And then I just went through all of my lawn fawn sets that had sweet that I thought would probably work with what I was looking for. So think of all of those food sets that you might have or those holiday ones that might have sentiments that would work. I ended up using the How You Bean strawberry or berry add-on. And then that costume party set also has a lot of sweet sentiments or a sentiment with the word sweet in it. And then you can add from there because the glory that is Lawn Fawn stamps is those sentiments all go together beautifully. Either if you are looking for the same font style or if you want to switch up your font style a little bit, you can do that with most of them. And they line up so well. So I'm just stamping that on some scrap white cardstock here using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink. And then for my sentiments, I did cut them out with Avery L's Simple Sentiment strips I think they're called and then using some Big Mama foam tape I always save a little bit of that adhe double sided adhesive release sheet for sticking to the back side of my foam tape so I can cut it apart into strips like I need it without it sticking horribly to my scissors. I know my cutter bee scissors are supposed to be like like stick proof or you know they're not supposed to stick but they are quite old and um quite loved and so they've kind of worn off that non-stick coating so then i will just add these onto the front of my panels and of course i drop everything that's why there are two sides to every piece of paper and you're allowed to use both of them <laughs> So for my inside sentiments, I'm using the Simply Summer Sentiment Strip. There have the coolest day ever. I just ended up cutting it apart and taking out the word coolest and replaced the word coolest with sweetest from the Sweet Friends stamp set. Stamping those in oxide inks to coordinate with my honeycomb on the front side of the card. So on that teal one, I do end up going back in later and adding the leftover. I had one teal jelly slash honey pot leftover that I added to that one. And for my red one, I ended up adding a bee with a bee trail. 
And then for my accents on these, I really wanted red hearts for my red one. And I didn't have the proper shade of a red jelly heart. I think I have red jelly hearts, but they're not the right color for this. And so I thought, mm, I'm just, I'm going to wing it and make hearts with my Nouveau Vintage Drops. And the one on the scrap piece of paper looked good. I also didn't really care for my placement. And I think sometimes we just need to walk away. It probably looked fine and I could have left it and it would have, you know, it looked great. I overthink things. It's all good. So I add a few more of those, and since those turned out so great, I decided to add just glitter drops to my second one here. And then tapping that on my desktop to flatten those out and adding some glitter to the wings. I'm going to bring in my cards here. I did do a live voicing for this one, and I decided to just voice over it because a lot of it was repetition. But I did like how both of my mock high five cards turned out just by shopping my stash. So if I'd have missed out on the high five kit, I think I would have been happy with what I could create with it with what I had on hand. I think as makers, we like to, I like to collect stamps and dies. It's, you know, probably another hobby aside from card making. But it's, it's good to know that I can shop my stash and come up with something that'll give me a similar look. So if you missed out on the high five kit, definitely shop your stash. See what you got on hand that will work and hopefully you can come up with something too. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are subscribed to the channel and have a great day and keep getting inky.